guys. Hi, this is Sonia. This is Sonia of the Good News Sunday Show. And welcome. Welcome to Firm Foundation Friday. And a few weeks ago on Firm Foundation Friday, we began our study of prayer, which will no doubt last until the end of the year. So the last time we did a video, we talked about several prayers, biblical prayers, that are in the scripture with their answers. So we gave the person who was praying and the Bible verse and the prayer and the answer. Okay? So, after praying about what we were going to talk about today, the Lord has led me to address several prayers in the Bible that were not answered. That's right, you guys. Several prayers in the biblical text, in our Lord and Savior's holy word, that were not answered. And we have three prayers in the Old Testament that were not granted. And the biblical characters who prayed those prayers are Moses, Saul, and David in the Old Testament. Then in the New Testament, we have two examples of biblical prayers that were not answered. And the people that prayed those prayers are one, the mother of the son of Zeb Zebedee, and Paul. So what we're going to do today is we are addressing these biblical prayer requests. We are just going to read them straight from the Word of God. So first off, we have Moses. And our text is Numbers chapter 11. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted my servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in the sight that thou layest the burden of all these people on me? Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in my bosom? As a nursing father beareth the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto the fathers, whence should I have should I have flesh to give unto all the people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, out of thy hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see. I'm sorry, my glasses are um, new, and I'm adjusting to them. And let me not see my wretchedness. Okay, so there we have Moses' biblical prayer, and of course. The Lord did not answer that prayer. He did not grant that prayer because it was not in the Lord's will for Moses to die. Okay, so let's look at that one more time. What did Moses say to the Lord? He said, I am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. There's our boy Moses asking for the Lord to kill him and take him out of his misery because he can't handle the job that God has given him. Moses. So next we have Saul. And Saul's unanswered, ungranted prayer request can be found in the book of Samuel. Samuel 28.3. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits 
and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shaham, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw that the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Okay, so here is... Here is Samuel. Samuel's dead, okay? And here is Saul praying, but in his heart he wants to seek he wants to seek a medium for help. So he's not trusting God. So God does not answer that prayer. End of story. He seeks a medium, some woman to help him, as if the Lord needed help in answering his prayer. So there we have Saul. And so next, we're going to look at our boy David. Okay? So, and David's prayer is, also, is in 2 Samuel. Okay? And it reads as follows. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord. To blasphemy the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed into his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth prostrate all night praying and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth but he would not neither did he eat bread with them and it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead for they said behold while the child was yet alive we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to into his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then the servant said unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst raise, rise and eat at all. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore shall I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So that's David fasting over his baby that he had with Uriah, which we know was adultery. So God chose not to grant David's prayer and let this particular child live. Unanswered prayers right here in the Bible, right here in the biblical text. And I'm sharing these with you because we need to be aware of the reasons why God does not always honor or answer our prayers. 
sometimes they're just outside of his will. And if we don't know what his will is, then we can look at his word to find his will because it's in here. Okay? So moving forward to Matthew 20, 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. She wanted something. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these, my two sons, may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Okay, so that is the mother of the sons of Zebedee. An unanswered prayer. She wanted one boy on the left and one boy on the right. And Jesus did not have the say so in who would sit on the right and left hand of our Heavenly Father. So, let's move on to Paul, who is our final example today of biblical prayers not answered. Just plain not answered. Okay, so Paul. So we're in the book of 2 Corinthians. And Paul, 2 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest in me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Paul. Paul had approached the Lord in regards to a thorn. A particular thorn that caused him to suffer. And the Lord chose not to remove that thorn. Even though Paul prayed earnestly. But... Paul decided that it was okay. Paul decided that it was all right. Paul decided that this was his cross to bear. So, there we have it. Five biblical examples of unanswered prayers. No, these, these people are not waiting for an answer. They knew right away that the Lord had, had an answer and it was basically no. It wasn't, there wasn't any not yet. There wasn't any one day. The answer was just plain no. So, last week, if you want to go back and look at that video, you will discover, I believe it's five prayers that were answered in the biblical text. And the answer is also there for us. Now, I, my heart hurts for many people who are praying and praying and praying. They're on Facebook praying. They're on Instagram praying. They're, they're praying. They're asking for prayer requests. They're asking for people to pray for them. But I'm wondering if they know how to pray for themselves, if they know how to pray for their families, 
in their children. If they know the basis, the foundation of the word in regards to prayer. Because what the Lord likes and what he is impressed with is his word, not ours. His words. He wants us to approach him with the words that we have learned from him. Because this book, this Bible, contains over 450 prayers. And I personally don't believe that they're there for us to ignore them. Okay? We can use these prayers as the foundation for our prayers today. The good news is, the good news is that we still have time. If you're watching this video, or if you can hear my voice, we still have time. We still have time to dig into his word, align our person, our lives, our homes, and the best that we can do with our families in the word of God so that we can glean and learn all that we can in the here and now. That's the good news. The good news is that we still have time. We still have time. This is Sonia signing out for the Good News Sunday Show, Season 3. Raw, real, relevant, righteous. Sonia, that's me, I'm raw. Jesus is real. Okay? Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is relevant and God Almighty. God Almighty, He Himself, He is the only one that is righteous. This is Sonia signing out for the Good News Sunday Show. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.